Hello, welcome back to the LTC of Oops All Archers FEA It's Evolved. So this is chapter 5x, our singular Gaiden quote-unquote chapter. And obviously this is going to be a very different chapter when instead of a paladin and two cabs, we instead have a ranger, a hunter, and a major archer. Ephraim's role doesn't really change very much, to be perfectly honest. So, there's been some doctoring. Not with Orson's stats, actually. He's the one unit that I didn't change the growths of because he's not exactly going to be around for a very long time anyway. What I have doctored is I've doctored the stats of the Silver Sword. So it has 100 crit, 255 hit. The Steel Bow retains its hit and crit values. And additionally, Ephraim here has the Regenly, which is his personal weapon, and therefore I've also set his weapon stats, which has Repair Effectiveness and grants Canto Plus, because Ephraim always has to get better things than Erika. So, in vanilla FE8, oops, all arch has evolved, both Ford and Kyle here have a very nice niche, because their personal skills spur speed, and spur strength mean that, for instance, on this map, they can perfectly team up in order to double and kill enemies that they otherwise wouldn't be able to, which is very convenient. Obviously, that isn't as important in this run. The Ford himself will not be of any consequence, whereas Kyle actually might. This is because he is a hunter compared to Ford's mage archer, meaning that, like Gilliam, once he hits level 10, he will be able to promote into a Wyvern Knight, I'm currently working through this LTC through working forward after having worked out my final intended setup, meaning that I don't know if I necessarily need another flyer. Still, since we're going to be here for the turns anyway, we might as well train him while we're at it. One other thing that I've doctored is that all of the enemy weapons that they hold on to have been set to zero hit. So we've got that iron lance there, fire here, and even, actually, all the iron bows, which will come in handy very quickly. This is specifically for this map. I may change things again directly for the next map. So first, Kyle kills this soldier here. And Ephraim kills this soldier to the north. I don't think it especially matters which weapon he's using, but technically using the Regan Leaf gives him two weapon experience instead of one. So that's nice, I guess. Orson rescues moves forward, and Ford will be important for two things when it comes to baiting enemies. The first one will be baiting this archer here with the iron bow, so that later on, Kyle will be able to enemy phase this archer. Here we go. Yeah, 11 hit, one crit. Not very likely for that archer there to die. On turn two, Kyle has to kill this axe fighter so that Orson, so that Orson can move ahead at his full move, which Orson then does. This means that Kyle will also be able to kill this mage here on enemy phase. Then Ford moves forward once again, luring the archer closer. And there's that mage. And the level up. Okay, so on turn three, Kyle kills the sword fighter. Orson moves forward with the steel with the silver sword equipped, allowing him to enemy phase kill this cavalier here. Ford moves forward two tiles north of Kyle, so that we get the enemy phase archer kill. Orson then charges ahead at this enemy here, and kills with the Silver Sword.
Kyle moves ahead into range of this archer for enemy phase, and Ford just moves forward slightly without getting in his way. Orson gets to kill four enemies here on enemy phase. There's our second. God damn, what bad level, bad unit. And that's the last one there. And there's the Archer. Allowing Kyle to reach level 7. There we go. Orson now moves his full move. Killing this Shaman. And Kyle and Ford both move ahead at full steam. Unfortunately, we can't kill that Axe Fighter, so we're just going to do so now. And Orson gets... Yep, yet another bad, bad level, eh? Kyle and Ford both keep on moving. And nothing happens on the enemy phase. So now, Orson has to move his full move, and specifically drop Ephraim holding onto the Regan Leaf to the east. This is important because now Kyle is going to play a phase kill this fighter over here. And since Ephraim isn't in range of this monk, the monk will suicide itself onto Kyle next on the enemy phase. So Kyle's so Ford's final useful contribution is that he will bait both of these calves on the enemy phase. So Ephraim gets to kill one enemy. Orson ends up killing two, killing one himself. And Ephraim gets level. I don't think this is important, but it certainly exists. There's Cav 1. And that's the monk gone. Okay, so now Kyle gets to come back and kill one of the calves. And Ephraim, Regenleaf kills the boss, allowing for a perfect one hit KO. Now, in order to prevent the throne from getting taken, Orson runs up, just starts to store his stuff in the supply, and trades Ephraim to a killer to a killer bow, to a steel bow even. The steel bow switch is important, as it means that Ephraim is able to kill two enemies rather than just one on this enemy phase. And therefore gain another level up. Okay. Now Kyle kills this last calf. Meaning that we've gotten above level 8. Orson stores all of his stuff. 
And now Ephraim will get to seize for a 9 turn clear. The result is that we have Ephraim with 2.5 levels, Kyle with 3 and a third levels, and all of Orson's stuff. I'm slightly annoyed that this is a 9 turn clear, as it turns out that the exact spot that Orson's able to get to with range movement is one off the amount that would be needed for Ephraim to actually seize the throne sooner. Alas, what a world we live in. So now we just seize, and that's the map complete. Definitely if I'd wanted to, I could have not used the Silver Sword and instead given Orson another weapon from the convoy, but this is a reliable method, insofar as combat ribbing goes, to allow this clear with the resources I have for our prior setup. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I hope to see you back again for Chapter 6, our fog map.